Hey everybody, it's nutritionist Dr. Mike Grissel, and welcome to the new first 2021 episode of the Dr. Mike Show. New upgraded, as you can see, we're, if, you're, if you're watching this, we're doing video now. Also, I uh, have upgraded audio system, so got some cool things going on for, uh, for you guys with some new versions and new updates to the Dr. Mike Show. One of the things, though, that we want to kick off now, since it's the new year, New Year's resolutions, I wanted to you know kick off and start talking about New Year's resolutions. If you watch... Uh, Vita Hustle, if you watch the Just Fuel show that I do on Instagram TV with Kaiza on the Vita Hustle channel, that's just uh, Get Vita Hustle, we do it every two weeks. We did a great show prior to Christmas and New Year's uh, and the holiday season about New Year's resolutions, and I feel like we just scratched the surface. So you can check that out on Instagram. Uh, if you go to the Vita Hustle channel, you can see it on um, their Instagram TV through their IGTV, but I want to just hit up on some some of the things that we talked about, get into a little bit more detail in some of the other concepts, because I think that now is a great time to make change, and there are two, there's two real camps that you'll find when it comes to New Year's resolutions. There are people who are really pushing New Year's, new change, new you, that sort of stuff, and then there's a, an anti-New Year's resolution crew, which is really pushing against making those changes, you know, you don't need to do it now, you should make changes all the time, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things I really want to make a concerted effort to help serve and help you moving forward now is to really focus, I think, more on the positive. I saw this really interesting article about a month or so ago, and it was about, I think the person was a pathologist, um, maybe not a pathologist, I can't remember, maybe a gastroenterologist, the person was a physician but it was totally not related to infectious disease. And what this person did, I believe it was on TikTok, was they they built incredible momentum, views, and a following by explaining and talking about what was going on with the coronavirus and the COVID vaccine in a really positive way. And you know, the point of the article was that by spreading good news, you can actually reach a lot of people, that it doesn't have to be anti myth busting, all that sort of stuff, which is really very popular and, and kind of a, a strategy that people use to, to outreach people, the, the debunk crew. And I think the debunking thing is totally fine. But one of the things that really resonated with me when I read that was one of my core nutritional principles is to focus on the do's and not the don'ts that everybody knows what they not what they shouldn't do, right? When it comes to food, you know, the foods that you shouldn't be eating. But how do you do the things that you should be doing? That's the difficult part. And so when I was reading this article about this physician, you know, that really clicked with me. Mike, you need to focus more on the do's if you want to help more people. So I really want to help you 2021 and beyond. I know that a lot of you have been on this this ride, this Dr. Mike ride since 2005, 2004, right? So a long time. I appreciate those people very much. And so if you're new, we're going to be coming, bringing the heat with a lot more positivity and, and proactiveness that I think we need in nutrition. Um, so one of the things that's very relevant to this, I know we're going to get into New Year's resolutions, is the dietary guidelines. Every five years, the, the U.S. government releases dietary guidelines for Americans. And this is like the season for people to complain about my plate, about the food guide pyramid, about government, government recommendations, how they're terrible. So I sat down New Year's Day, read the first 100 pages in the dietary guidelines through the lens of what in this can really help people. So yes, there's a lot of things that we could fix about the dietary guidelines. I can tell you I spent the 2015 dietary guidelines for Americans. I spent a fair amount of time like working, petitioning, trying to educate scientists and, and then people who make actually the legislation on the research that I had done with protein and lean beef and cardiovascular disease. And there were some things that weren't that great that happened. And as a result, the research wasn't included in those dietary guidelines. In the new dietary guidelines, though, it looks like it was taken into consideration, which is great. So I tell you this just to say, look, I, I kind of have a jaded view on dietary guidelines because of personal experiences, but I don't think that I don't want to bring that because I think there's enough negativity about that. And there's actually a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of great scientists that put in a lot of time and effort, like the amount of work that goes into creating the dietary guidelines and reviewing the literature. It's tremendous. It really is. And, you know, I know some of the scientists that are on the dietary guidelines committee, and I think it's important out of respect for them and all the other people that put in a lot of work 
that we pull out the things that are really useful. And so over the next several shows, not this show because I want to talk New Year's resolutions, but over the next several shows, we're going to go through a lot of the stuff with the dietary guidelines because I think there's a lot that we can learn. There's a lot that's going to shock you, right? And there's a lot of things that we can learn from it. So through lens, positivity, how can we proactively help move forward? What's the good news with nutrition and how can you help it make your life healthier and better? That's what we're all about. I'd like to say I think that's what I've always been all about, but I want to make an even more concerted effort to bring that to you in that fashion. Okay, so one of the, so when I talked before I got into the dietary guidelines stuff, when I was talking about the different camps of New Year's resolutions, I think that right now, because there is so much positive momentum, right now, excuse me, I'm recording this on January 4th, there's a lot of positive momentum about change. And I think it's a mistake not to harness that. I think you should roll with that. And pushing back on and being anti-New Year's resolution, I don't think you should do that. Ride the momentum wave because so much of change in your life is about the snowball effect. It's about how do we move this thing forward. But what I want to talk about in today's show is how can we frame it differently? That's really the important piece. Because I think that change is important because you always want to be moving to make yourself more capable, to make yourself healthier, to make yourself a, a better human. And I think that sort of change is very positive. I don't want you to embrace nutrition change because you think you're fat and that makes you a bad person or you know it, it makes you feel less of yourself. There are a lot of people that exercise because they don't like themselves. And it's like this self-flogging. I'm not about that. I don't want you to starve yourself, go on all sorts of whatever the diet is, so you can create a different physical version of yourself that you think is going to be better. I think that everybody should be, you know, as lean and as healthy as they want, and I think it takes a lot of hard work and effort, and I want to help you do that, but your mindset about how you go about doing that is so important because you got to enjoy the journey. So when you start, you know, one of the things I think when people get New Year's resolutions and then they push forward and then they give up on them, it's because their headspace wasn't right as they were making the change, right? And I want this to be positive. Yes, you got to give up things. You can't, dietary guidelines, here's a great example. Dietary guidelines say, the most recent ones, I think it was the same as actually in 215, that an adult male could have one drink a week. Chances are, if you want to lose weight, you can't have one drink a week. Right? There are things that you're going to have to do. you got to go to bed early. Uh, my good friend, uh, Joe Dowdell, who my, my kids call Uncle Joe, he's not like an internet good friend. He's like an actual good friend. He, um, he had a post on Instagram the other day. He, he, got, he has been like busting his butt to get in shape. And when I say shape, it's like Joe shape. So Joe is generally in like Captain America shape, and now he wants to go even better. So when I say he's busting his butt to get in shape, it's like from really good shape to extremely good shape. But he works really hard. He trains hard, trains a bunch. He works really hard with his diet. And there are all these sacrifices that he makes along the way. But he enjoys the process and he enjoys how he feels. He enjoys being healthy. He enjoys the fact that, you know, he is able to do all the things that he wants to do and that his health can support that. So, again, it's this positive outlook. Like, I think you could take a really negative outlook on why you're going to make these changes come the new year. But if you flip the script and you do the same things but with a different mindset, it's going to make all the difference. It's going to help you persist past mid-January when everybody else is jumping off the wagon, right? It's going to help you persist past March and, and, and go further. So one of the things I want to talk about, we got, let me see, got five different things. We'll see how long. I'm going to try to keep this in about 30 minutes when I come back for an episode two. We want to talk about these five keys as you're setting your New Year's resolutions, as you're setting your new goals. What are the five keys that I think are very important for um, when it comes to these creating New Year's resolutions. So the first one is to focus on action. So if anyone, if you've, if you have read my late, not my latest, my second to latest book, The Metashred Diet, well, if you hadn't, shame on you, but if you have, then you'll know I talk about in this book um, action goals and endpoint goals. And if you go to, and I'll, I'll link this up in the show notes, episode eight of the Dr. Mike show, we talk about this. I do this eight, nine, and 10 are all episodes eight, nine, and 10 are basically I go through all the different principles and talk through the different principles in the Metashred diet. So check out the Metashred diet. If you haven't, if you have the extra time, 
leave me a nice review on Amazon, greatly appreciated. But in the book, we talk about these action versus execution goals and or endpoint goals, action versus endpoint goals, or I call them sometimes execution goals. And the key here is whenever you're setting goals, I want you to make sure you're setting goals of things that you can actually do. What are things that you can do on a daily basis? What are things that you can do on a weekly basis? And be very, very specific about what that action is, when you're gonna do it, and how you're gonna execute it. Now, oftentimes the traditional goal would be an endpoint goal, which is I wanna lose 15 pounds. I want to drop my blood pressure by 10 points. Okay, those are endpoint goals. That's where you're gonna be at the end. The culmination of all your actions on a daily basis are gonna get you that end result. The thing about the endpoint goal is you actually can't do that. You can't lose weight, right? You can't, well, I mean, you can lose weight, but you can't get on a scale and say, I'm 15 pounds lighter. You can't put on a blood pressure cuff and say, my blood pressure is down 10 points. It doesn't work that way. What are the things that you have to do on a daily basis to make that happen? Those are your action goals. Now, if you focus on those things, and doing those things on a daily basis, the rest is gonna take care of itself. So I create for clients, I'll create these little like weekly action charts. <coughs> Excuse me. And the action charts is literally like checklists. I kind of have one here that I use for myself. So checklist, right? I know, very analog. Um, but it's just very simple. Like what are the things that you need to do? So if we're talking about did I eat protein at every meal? Did I get in 45 to 60 minutes of exercise? Did I drink a glass of water with breakfast, glass of water with lunch? Whatever the things you need to do to achieve your goal, make sure they're action oriented. Make sure at the end of the day you can say, did I do this, yes or no? And if you set these action goals and start out slow, set three at the most. If you set these action goals, that's gonna set you up for so much more success. Because you then if you just, if you pick them right, other plug for the Metasure diet, right? Or get six posts of nutrition, talk about a lot in there. But if you pick scientifically backed things that work, do them on a daily basis, the goals are going to take care of themselves. So step one, focus on actions. What are the things that you can do every day? Building on that, the second thing you want to do is improve a behavior. So oftentimes, and with nutrition, it's actually easy. So if you wanted to, if you've never played the guitar before and you wanted to learn how to play the guitar, that was your New Year's resolution, right? It would be difficult to, to implement this because it's, you wanna improve on a behavior. If you've never played the guitar before, you can't become slightly better guitar player because you're starting from scratch. Fortunately, with food and activity, we all move and we all eat. So we have habits and behaviors. Now, instead of starting something totally new, focus on improving th something just a little bit. What can you improve that's gonna take you closer to your goal? So here's an example of what not to do and then what you could do instead. When it comes time to say, we'll stick with this weight loss goal because it's so popular this time of year. You're gonna lose, you're gonna set up and you're gonna lose 15 pounds. So what would someone do? They say, well, I'm not gonna eat any more carbs. I'm gonna cut out carbs entirely. And by carbs, most people would define that as breads, pastas, grains, etc., and not counting fruits and vegetables. Maybe sometimes fruits would count. So they cut out all carbs right? That's not really improving a behavior that I would consider that going nuclear because chances are you can still eat bread, you can still eat pasta, you can still eat rice and lose weight. You just can't have it infinitum and you can't have your pasta as part of a fettuccine Alfredo, right? So what can you do? How can you improve a behavior? I think chances are one of the things I like sticking with the positive is this concept of dietary displacement, which I talk a lot about in the six pillars of nutrition is how can we put in a good habit to displace Kind of a bad habit so a good thing you can do is eat more fruits and vegetables this is always a goal for basically every client let's say you eat lunch every day let's just make lunch better by making sure that half your plate is vegetables if you sat down every day for lunch and you normally had whatever sandwich there was near your office or whatever you had left over for dinner or whatever you could get from the convenience store right so you're already eating breakfast but maybe it's not ideal and you made the rule that half of your plate at lunch is always gonna be vegetables, right? We're not rewriting the rule book because you're already eating at lunch. 
but what we're doing is we're improving it. And by focusing on making at least half your plate vegetables, that's going to push a lot of other stuff off your plate. Let's say you already eat breakfast, right? But you have a bowl of cereal, which is kind of a lame breakfast, right? So we want to add protein. Protein at breakfast is extremely important. Arguably the most important time to have protein, right? Except for right after an uh, intense workout. So we want to have protein at breakfast. So then we're thinking, I'm eating breakfast. What are the ways that I can add more protein for breakfast? I could have a protein shake. I could have Greek yogurt. I could have eggs. I could have a couple slices of steak that I had for dinner, and I could have that on my plate with my breakfast, right? So we're just improving a behavior. It's exponentially easier to improve a behavior than it is to start a totally new one. And the key here about momentum, which I talked about at the beginning, is why we want to take advantage of the energy, the change energy, and the New Year's resolution energy around ex around change right now is because of the momentum. So take a behavior that you're already doing and let's make it a little bit better. That's going to get you so much farther ahead than if you were to start from scratch. So a couple other examples I have here. Let's say you, uh, from an exercise perspective, you exercise two to three times a week, but you're kind of inconsistent. So maybe it's really more one to three times a week. Okay, so you're already exercising. Take that kind of exercise that you're doing, and now let's make it more consistent. Let's do four times a week without fail. So you don't have to learn a whole new exercise skill set, right? I'm not saying start Olympic lifting from having no experience. Let's just get more consistent with what you're already doing, right? So you already know how to exercise, but then now let's be more consistent. Maybe that's a timing thing. For me, for exercise to work on a consistent basis, it's got to happen first thing in the morning. It's just the tried and true thing of my life. First thing in the morning, exercise, make it happen, move on with your day. So improve on a behavior. Think of what are two or three things that you can do every day, right? You can take action on, or maybe it's weekly, like a food prep thing could maybe be a weekly or two or three times a week, something that you're doing, and let's try to make that better, okay? Focus on actions, improve a behavior. These are the two ways right now we want to get ahead with our New Year's resolutions. Next thing, think long term. Now this is gonna separate you from everyone else when it comes to New Year's resolutions because everybody's thinking it's a four week sprint, <clears throat> it's a six week challenge, it's a 12 week body transformation, which all those things are good. I don't know how many times we could mention the Metastrad diet in this one podcast, but I'm going for a record. The Metastrad diet is a four to eight week plan, right? And then you, you're moving on from that. So I understand the efficacy and the value of this. But when we're talking New Year's resolutions for right now, I want you to think long term. So if you're doing something like this, this is just two weeks or two months, excuse me, this is one month or two months out of your 12 month cycle. I want you, so I want you to think long term. And what you're gonna then do is use these 30 day sprints or focal point challenges is like I, I like to call them. These 30 day focal point challenges to bring your awareness around specific behaviors and intensify your commitment to the goal. So what I'm talking about with this, and this is something new that I've tested out over the last year with clients, and I love it. So if we take a long-term view on something, and then we do these 30-day focal point challenges to really get better at something specific. So for me right now, January, my 30-day focal point challenge is meditation. So I took a course this fall meditation for um, intro to med meditation for educators and I have another one that I'm taking in January now it's kind of like the 202 version of that mindfulness uh, for educators I know I'm not technically an educator but I work as a, as a coach and and work to help educate you guys but I also have kids and I want to be able to learn teach and educate them on the principles of mindfulness so I'm taking this other course but then in my personal life I'm committing to 30 minutes every single day of mindfulness meditation. So it's something, meditation is something that I've always have in my life, but I'm using this 30 day focal point challenge to really commit to intensify my practice. Now during, I have this sort of some other notes, uh, during March, my focal point challenge is gonna be to eat a kilogram of vegetables every day. Now I eat a lot of vegetables, but do I eat a kilo every day? I don't know, because I don't measure it. But having to go through and weigh and measure all the vegetables that I eat every day for 30 days and to make sure I'm getting that kilo, which is sort of a random number, I appreciate that, but that I'm making sure I'm getting all that together 
in my diet is going to help me be, have greater awareness about the vegetables that I'm consuming, the amount, and I bet you I'm going to need to eat more. And this challenge is going to force me to eat more. Um, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, for the last two years, I've done the Concept 2 Holiday Challenge. We rode 200,000 meters in that time span, right? That's another time point where really I focus on my aerobic conditioning and that commitment. So if we use these, my overall goal is, my overall goal is kind of to be Captain America, for lack of a better term. So it's not weight loss necessarily oriented. It's not health oriented. Like I want to be fit and strong and healthy as possible. I want to be able to be active and, and well into my 90s. And if my kids or my wife, my family needs me to do anything, I want to be able to do it physically. So that's that's kind of my global view on what I want to accomplish with my health. And I use these 30 day challenges to kind of focus in on different things. So along the way, my blood pressure is going to get better during the March challenge, right? My stress levels are definitely going to go down during January, spending this really intense time with the mindfulness. So we take these focal point challenges and you allow it to hone your skills in a specific area, but keep that big global view. So what is it that you want to accomplish with your health over the next year? And then how can you focus? Because I mentioned earlier, I only want you to focus on two or three habits, these action things at a time. You can tell for me for January, my thing is just one thing is really my main focus is that, excuse me, is the mindfulness. So what is the two or three things that you can focus on at a time and then pick one or two of those to really intensify every 30 days. And then the next month you pick a couple different habits and really focus and intensify on one. And what you're going to do is you're going to build month after month after month to get better. Why I think this works so well is I can liken it to, um, I've taken biochemistry a lot. So I took biochemistry as an undergraduate, like my, I have a degree in chemistry with a focus uh, on biochemistry. Then I went to medical school, basically did all the academic schoolwork of medical school. So biochemistry there. Um, left medical school because I wanted to get my PhD. So I took classes. I was at the University of Vermont Medical School. So I took classes in the nutrition department, took some biochemistry, took a biochemistry class there. It was like kind of weight loss biochemistry. Went to Penn State, had to take, um, I didn't have a technically a degree in nutrition, so I had to take some undergraduate level classes, another biochemistry class there, took a, a graduate level biochemistry class, took actually another biochemistry class, uh, specifically focused on uh, prostaglandins and eicosanoids, which are the short-lived hormones that the long chain omega-3 fatty acids get converted into, right? So it's a lot of biochemistry, more than most people would want to take. And do I remember everything from it? No. But every version of biochemistry I took was a little bit different. So as an undergraduate, we literally drew out every chemical, every carbon, every bond for glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. So understanding like how you go from sugar to your body's energy currency of ATP. Every carbon, every bond, all that stuff. Very detailed. Medical school, you learn it a little bit different. Graduate school, you learn it a little bit different. So. I don't remember all of it, but by layering on these different educational experiences, I have a great working knowledge of biochemistry. And when we use these 30 day focal point challenges to support your overall arching goal, you're going to have a better understanding and appreciation of your health and that health journey. So that's really the, 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 the genesis behind this idea of using these focal point challenges under the umbrella of looking at this long term one year two years three years if you have a weight loss goal it has to be a 52 week weight loss goal i don't want to hear i want to lose x pounds in four weeks eight weeks 12 weeks by my birthday which is four months away none of that where do you want to be a year from now take it slow or take it fast but have the your end point be a year from now not 28 days from now because that's going to allow you to persist a long time it's going to allow you to get better habits because you're in this body forever right so how can you take i'm sure in the, right now maybe you have some new year's resolutions in your mind how can you take whatever the timeline you're thinking of and expand it to 52 weeks right do that and it's really going to start sticking and you're really going to start making some great changes Last thing, oh no, four, four, four and five. We're gonna just keep going here. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna do this in a second show. 
I want you to take into account other areas of your life. So it's really important. I gave this, I used to give this talk called Unlimited Willpower. And, you know, it was to help people get the mindset and wrap their head around the mental aspect of making chains and harnessing willpower. And willpower is, is super interesting because it's like a muscle, right? I'm, I'm sure you may have heard this analogy. The more you use your willpower, the more you strengthen it. But there's also, because it's like a muscle, it can also fatigue. If you kind of test and push your willpower too much, then it can give out. And also, willpower is, it's not bucketed. Fitness, nutrition, work life, family. It's not all these different things. So I got all these cups because I drink all the time, right? So you don't have two. There's another, I can get three more coffee cups. Like it's not all these things. It's one, you have one thing of willpower. And if you use this much of it for fitness, you got this much left for the rest of your life. Not like the, not like the, eternally the rest of your life, but the other areas of your life. For those of you listening and not watching, I apologize you missed the hand waving and, um, and gesturing with the jars. But basically, think of your life and your willpower as a glass of water. And it's full, because the glass is always half full, right? Or totally full. But then as you start pushing yourself in different areas, it only, it removes the willpower you have for other areas of your life. And if you've ever not achieved a goal, which I hope you have it, because if you're achieving all your goals, you should set the sights higher, right? But if you've ever achieved a goal and then kind of beat yourself up about it, is it because you didn't do certain things or were you asking too much of yourself because there were all these other things going on in your life? Like you can't start a new business, lose 50 pounds, get married, move to a new uh, state, um, deal with the passing of a family member. Like you can't do all these things. I know if you go on the internet, they'll tell you, you can do everything, but don't try to, you could try. Don't try to do everything. It's gonna drive you crazy. And Kaiser and I were talking about this on the, the Just Fuel New Year's Resolution show, that there are these seasons of your life and during certain seasons, you're gonna be able to focus on certain things. Now is a great season, hopefully, for you, for health, fitness, nutrition, right? Because there's a lot of momentum behind that. But maybe it's not. Maybe you're dealing with a bunch of other stuff and you can't put all your effort into your weight loss and your nutrition and your fitness goals. And that's okay. And I think we need to give ourselves a pass if it's not. So when you're setting these New Year's resolutions, like appreciate there's going to be other stuff going on. Maybe you have a new job that requires you to travel a ton. So getting hyper aggressive on a nutrition plan where you're going to weigh and measure all your food isn't as practical as something else you could do, but still move yourself closer to your goal. So consider the season of life that you're in. Consider the other things that are going on in your life and set your goals accordingly, right? Give yourself a pass if it's just not the right time to go all in on your health and nutrition. Just go like partly in from an intensity standpoint, but be fully committed to being healthy over the long term, right? Maybe you're not going to exercise twice a day for an hour a day to pop, right? But you can do 30 minutes every single day. And that's great. Do that instead. Recognize what's going on in other areas of your life and apply as much as you can to make sure the rest of you is still healthy and doing okay. Now, the last thing, and, and before I get into that, because the reason is there are only 24 hours in a day. And then the classic follow-up to that would be, everyone is the same 24 hours. Look at all these people who are very successful, what they do with their 24 hours. Don't bother, don't do that. Recognize the fact that there are only 24 hours in a day. You can't do everything. Seven to nine of those, you should be sleeping. So you're, you're significantly less hours, right? You're, you're down to about 15 or 16. And what are you gonna do with those? And there are lots of things that are important in your life family, friends, work, you know, hobbies, social life, and health and fitness to support all those. So make sure that your health and fitness goals that we're setting fit in in the context of your life. It's still gonna require some sacrifices, but make sure it's a workable piece in your life. Last thing, number five, to really make your New Year's resolutions rock this year, help someone else achieve a similar goal. This is so important. If you can help someone else achieve this goal, you are gonna be so much more empowered to achieve your goal and you're gonna be so much better at it. 
So I have, I got, so for those of you that are listening, I'm sorry, again, you can't see, I'm really fully taking advantage of the new video. Um, some leather making stuff for Christmas for my wife. And I made this bracelet and in it, you can't even see it even though I'm pointing to it, it has the word Sonder. Sonder is a word that is the realization that everyone around you has a rich and conflicted inter internal dialogue and life just like you do. And oftentimes with our New Year's resolutions, we get caught up in what do we wanna do? What do I have to do? And you know, there are so many other people there that could use help. And if you can take this outside of yourself and help somebody else, it's gonna empower you to be more compliant because you're gonna be a role model or a coach or a partner who's trying to help that other person along. And you also learn so much about health and nutrition and whatever you're trying to implement through teaching and helping others. So you probably won't find this on a lot of the, you know, seven things to do to make your new resolution stick, but really probably one of the most important things is help someone else or team up with someone else who wants to achieve similar goals and help them achieve those goals as well. I recognize that all those things like feeling bad that you ate, you know, whatever dessert or knowing that you're tired and you're not going to go out and exercise because you just would rather take a nap and you take the nap and you feel bad for not exercising. Everybody has those things. Everybody has those thoughts and it's okay. And if you help somebody else achieve their goals and help work with them, you're going to have a greater appreciation for what you're trying to do and it's going to make you better. And also when you help somebody else achieve their goals, it just feels good. So that's number five. Let's run through. I'll give you the one through five again here. So we want to focus on actions. We want to improve a behavior. Don't start from scratch. Think long term with your goals. This isn't four weeks, eight weeks. We're talking at least 52 weeks. When you're setting these goals, take into account the other areas of your life, right? You might be really busy in other aspects. So you got to adjust the intensity. You're going to be able to commit to your health goals accordingly. Now, remember, this is the intensity you're going to commit not the level of commitment. You're 100% in, but the intensity in which you do it is gonna have to be adjusted depending on the different things that are going on in your life. And finally, help someone else achieve that goal. So if you can do those five things, it's gonna take your new, res new year's resolutions to a whole new level. I hope everybody is doing well. I know 2020 was wild. We're gonna get back out now, 2021, and hopefully it's gonna be a little bit more some more normalcy for everybody. But independent of all the things that are going on, make your health a priority. It's so easy to not make your health a priority, but just take the little steps you need every single day to make your health a priority. Because a year from now, when we're sitting down and you're thinking about what you did, you're never gonna regret, oh man, I shouldn't have made my health such a priority, right? It's one of those things you look back on it and you're always gonna be happy you spent that time and invested that in yourself. So make yourself, make your health a priority, set some awesome New Year's resolutions. I hope you're happy that the show is back. If you like the show, check it out on iTunes, throw up a review, it would be greatly appreciated. We're also doing a new giveaway this month. Um, I know that we did a giveaway in October and then November, December, we missed the giveaways, but this month's giveaway is actually going to be really cool. We're doing a MyZone heart rate monitor. We're doing a Beat Elite from Human. And we're doing the pre-workout from Ascent. Ascent, the protein people. They have a pre-workout. And the theme is improving our, our cardiovascular health and our cardiovascular fitness. Right? So we've got the pre-workout to get us going. we got the Beat Elite to get nitric oxide production and, and better exercise output. And we've got the heart rate monitor so you can track your heart rate zones. So if you go to microcell.com, you can opt in, join the email list, and you're entered to win for free. It's going to be the January giveaway. It's awesome. Uh, I was supposed to do it in December, but we just didn't get around to it. So this is January's giveaway. Super cool. Totally free. If you're already on the email list, look out for an email from me about it because you'll need to just raise your hand and say, yes, I'd love a free my zone and free beat elite and free pre-workout from Ascent. Um, so say yes, and then uh, if I'll draw a random person at the end of January, and hopefully you'll win. But hope everybody's having a great day. Hope everybody's new year kicked off awesome. We'll be back next week with another show.